Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to create real-time face attendance system that is linked to a real-time database. You can see at the back end, uh, this is our real-time database. It has all the information of the students. It has my ID number. It has the attendance time, uh, major, name, standing, all of that information. And as you can see, it shows here that I have been already marked and I can mark only after 30 seconds. So if I hide my face, and 30 seconds are gone, I can mark it again. It's loading, it shows my name, it shows the total number of attendance, and it says it has been marked. Now, if I come again, it will say already marked, so it will not mark this attendance. So that's the basic idea. I will hide my face so that it uh, can show you the status. So we already have other students as well. For example, we have Emily Blunt. So if I bring in her image, it says loading, and Emily Blunt was detected and her, uh, what do you call, attendance is marked. We also have Elon Musk. So let me just Google Elon. So here we have the image of Elon Musk. And there you go. It says loading and Elon Musk is marked. And if I bring it again, it is not going to detect. Uh, it will say already marked. So if I bring it again, you can see it says already marked. So after an X amount of time, you can mark it again. Otherwise, the system will not detect. So here, right now, you can see my face was detected. If I remove it, it will say already marked because not enough time has been passed by. It's, it's checking the time from here. And if you see here, you will see it updates in real time. So when over here, it will update. There you go. So you can see the orange. Uh, the total number of attendance was updated and the attendance last time was updated as well. So this is an amazing project that you can use uh, to implement it in real time. And if you want to learn how to create this on a web uh, app, then you can check out our Kickstarter page, which is live right now with the world's first web development course for computer vision, which will teach you all the basics of computer vision, along with all the basics of web development. So we will integrate both of them and we will create more than 30 web apps to create these amazing projects. So here you can see it is a little bit laggy because we are not using asynchronous functions, but on the web development part, we are going to use asynchronous functions. So it will download the data and it will show you the real time web webcam feed at the same time. So it will not be uh, in a series function, it will be parallel, it will running side by side. So this project is also part of the web development course. So if you wanted to implement it on web, do check out our Kickstarter page. Otherwise, you can do it in Python as well and create your interface and add these graphics and add this real time. And all of this is for free, of course. Uh, but our uh, premium course for web development is paid and it is 30% off right now on Kickstarter. So do check it out. So let's go ahead and create this project. This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. The most significant way to learn anything is by doing it for yourself. Brilliant's engaging hands-on lessons will let you learn six times more efficiently through interactive learning that you can do by viewing lecture videos. Their interactive and wide range of courses have a variety of subjects including algebra, statistics, algorithms, and much more. Learn computer science fundamentals without the need of coding and instead of using rigorous mathematics. Explore the internal workings of artificial neural networks through practical testing. Design innovative algorithms that a computer can process quickly. Enroll now and learn anything of your interest. Check out the link brilliant.org slash murtaza to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 listeners will also get 20% off their annual membership. If you would like to level up your computer vision skills, do check out our premium courses that are available on our CVZone platform. Links are in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. So today we are going to create this face attendance system that can be used for schools, for employees, for a company and so on. And what we are going to do is we are going to use this face recognition library. Now uh, you can see this is the GitHub page and uh, thanks to Mr. What's his name? A get key Adam. <laughs> okay. His name is Adam. So thanks to Adam and all the contributors for creating this library. 
and we have done a previous video on this but today what we are going to do is we are going to take this technology we are going to take this library and we are going to integrate it with a real-time database so that we can upload all the data on a server and then uh, when we are running the software we can download the data we can view it and we can upload more data to it we can update it and there's also this medium article that you can read again by adam uh, it explains how this face recognition library works. It is pretty good to see how it works. It uses face recognition, uh, sorry, face detection. Uh, then it uses these features. It ex extracts um, and creates these encodings, which you can see at the very end over here. So it will create these 128 uh, measurements that we will call as the encodings. And based on these encodings, we can use a machine learning model to actually compare which uh, of the two faces match with each other. So uh, they are using SVM classifier to, uh, to do that. So you don't really have to go through all of this and read it out, but it will be better if you do, if you understand the underlining principle of the library. So it will be useful for you. So what exactly are we going to do? We are going to follow these steps. So face recognition with real-time database. First of all, we'll look at the webcam. We will import our parameters and then uh, we will run our webcam, then we will add the graphics. So we have an interface in which uh, it will show whether it's active, or whether we are detecting the face, loading and all this stuff. And then we will uh, create an encoding generator. So this has to be done once. So for example, if you have three faces, three students, you have to do it for all three of them. So you run it once, it will generate the encoding for all three of them. And whenever you have a new student, you will have to create the encodings again. So you'll have to update them. So you will run this script. So this will be a separate script. Then we have to do this face recognition. So the face, uh, the encoding generator is going to generate a file in which we will have all the encodings. That encodings will be used by the face recognition script and it will be able to detect the faces. So you can put both of them in one script, but that is not very useful because every time we have to run, you should not be generating the encodings because they are pretty much the same each time. Then the next step is basically the database setup. So we are going to set up our database so that we can send in and we can receive the values. Then we have to add data to the database. Again, we will create another script for this in which it will become easier to add that, uh, the data. Otherwise, you can actually go to the website, you can go to the, uh, the database itself, and you can manually add the entries. But that will take some time. So instead of doing that, we can just create a script and we can just copy paste for each student and change the data and we can upload it all together at once. And then we also have to add the images. So images are stored in uh, a different place than the data itself. So the database is stored in our real-time database and the images are stored in a storage bucket. So uh, these two are separate, so we will handle them separately. But at the end of the day, the results will be shown uh, simultaneously. Then we have to update the database whenever there is an attendance. Whenever there is a face detected, we have to update the database. So we will do that. And then once we have detected the attendance, then it should not take another attendance until an X amount of time. So normally it will be one day. So 24 hours or the next day you can take attendance. That's the idea. Uh, but for simplicity, we are going to give it a limited time, for example, 30 seconds. So after 30 seconds, it can take the attendance again because we just want to see the effect. I don't want to sit here 24 hours just to show you that it works, right? So that's the idea. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. So the first thing we have to do uh, we are going to import all the images, the sources, everything, the files, and then we will start with the installation. The installation is a little bit tricky, but it's not that difficult, but I'll show you how it's done. So let's bring in the resources first. So what exactly do we need? So first of all, we are going to create here a new directory and we will call it resources. 
Now these are the sources. Then we can also create another one by the name images or we can do it inside this. So let's create it outside. So we will keep it separate. So images and within these images, we are going to add our three faces or three students that we are going to detect. So let me open this up. So open in Explorer and I will just drag and drop the images so we can see them as well. There you go. So these are the three images. Why is this not showing? So this is Emily Blunt. This is Elon Musk. And this is yours truly. So what can we do is uh, instead of writing one, two, three, we can give them IDs because based on the ID number, the student should be detected, uh, not based on their name because name can be similar, but the ID number is unique. So here we are going to give unique IDs. So three, two, one, six, five, four. That's my ID. And then we will give it to Elon. Let's give him the ID 963852. And then for Emily, we are going to give 741852. So these are the, or let's change that, uh, 852741. Yeah, so these are the three IDs that we are going to use. Now we have the images in the images folder. So these are the three students. If you wanted more, you can add more, as many as you want. Then the resources in the resources folder, we are going to add, we are going to add background and the modes. So let me open that up and show you what do I mean. Let's open that up in the Explorer. So here in the resources, we have modes. Actually, let me show you the background first. So this here is our background. So this is the attendance system graphics. Uh, here is the webcam that will be displayed and on the right hand side you will have the uh, information of the student. So you'll have the image and all that stuff. And where does that come from? That comes from the mode. So here if we click on mode, so these are the modes that we will see. So the first one will be active. The second one will be of the actual student. It will have the image. This part here is the total number of attendance. This here is the ID number, this here is the major. Then we have these three. Uh, this is which year did they join and uh, how many years have they been in the university? And this one, I actually forgot, what was this? Uh, the, uh, the, um, the standing of the student. Is it good standing, probation period or bad or whatever you want to write here. So it's just for showing that you can add lots of different parameters and you can actually display this information. Okay, so now that we have our images and we have the resources folder with the modes and the background, we can move on to installations. Now for installation, what we need is we need a C compiler. Now the C compiler, the easiest way to install the C compiler is to go to Visual Studio website. You can go to downloads and download the community version, which is available for free. And when you are installing it, make sure you select the desktop development with C++. So we need the C++ compiler, and this is the easiest way to install it. So you just go ahead and do that. Uh, it will take a while because it's, a, uh, it's quite large. And then once it's done, then we can go on to file settings. By the way, the project name is face recognition real time database. So this is the name of the project. This is using PyCharm. If you are not familiar, this is one of the best IDEs for Python. Okay, so here we have the project. We will go to uh, Python interpreter and we are going to add. So here, first of all, there's a list of libraries we have to install and make sure you install it in the same um, order. So first of all, we are going to install CMake. Then we are going to install Dlib. Then we are going to install face recognition Recogni where are you face recognition uh, okay let me just type it recognition there you go face recognition uh, what else do we need we need cv zone cv zone cv zone there you go so a cv zone is going to install uh, open cv 
and it will also install numpy if you don't want to install that it's up to you you can just go ahead and install uh, numpy and uh, opencv separately uh, the reason we are using cvzone is because we are going to take advantage of one of its functions which will give you a fancy rectangle so we are going to use that uh, and we will go to opencv uh, i believe it will already be installed but we are going to change its version and we will downgrade it to 4.5.4.60 uh, this is a little more stable than the previous uh, the newer ones that's why we are doing this otherwise if you want to stick with that it's it's fine as well so i believe all the installations are done i'm using python 3.7 if you are using a later version that's fine as well as long as it doesn't give you an error so uh, if it does uh, the specific version of Python I'm using is 3.7.6. So you can upgrade if you want. I believe it will still work with higher versions, 3.8, 3.9. But if it doesn't, you can always come back. So these were the installations. Now what we are going to do, we are going to create a main, main project file. And in this file, what happened? Oh, there's already a main, my bad. So we are going to delete that. And in, in this file, we are going to add all the code with all the real-time database and everything working now the rest of the codes that we are going to use uh, will be separate and different scripts and we will name them differently so here what we can do is we can start with the webcam so here we can write uh, import uh, cv2 then we will write cap equals cv2 dot video capture and i am using multiple cameras so i will write one uh, but you can write whatever you are using okay so over here do we need to set let's just set it just in case oh actually we do need to set it so uh, the width should be 1280 and the height should be the height should be number 4 is 720 so we have to specify this because we are using graphics and the graphics are based on these dimensions so if it increases or decreases you have to change those as well so then we are going to write while true we are going to uh, write success image equals uh, cap dot read and then once it has read we are going to write cv2 dot um, i am show and we were going to write uh, let's say display or let's say face attendance attendance if I can spell it right and then we are going to write image and then cv2 dot wait key and we'll give a one millisecond delay so this is pretty standard you can say is the boilerplate template code for running a webcam So let's wait for it and there you go. So now you can see me and the webcam is running fine. So now let's go ahead to the next step. We have done the first part, which is webcam. Now we have to do the graphics. So let's import the graphics. So we have our graphics in the resources folder in the background. So we are going to write here image background cv2 dots im read. We are going to give in the resources and background dot png it will load the image and then we simply have to display it so we will go here and we will write cv2 dot im show and we are going to write here face attendance uh, dense come on and then we will write image background so this will be the actual uh, output that we are going to use so here i will change this name and we will write here webcam so now we have the webcam and we have the image background. So let's run that and see if it works. There you go. So this is the attendance system and this is our webcam. It's running fine. So that's the idea. Actually, I made a mistake. Now I recognize it. This is not supposed to be 1280 by 720. It's supposed to be 640 by 480 because that's the next thing we are going to do. If you look at the image background this is the part where we have to add our webcam image and this is 640 by 480 the complete image is 1280 by 720. 
So that was the mistake. So now what we have to do is we have to take our webcam and we have to overlay it on the background because we don't want to display these two things separately. So how can we do that? It's very simple. We will simply write image background uh, at what exact point equals image. So what are those points? So we have the starting point and the ending point. Now I have already checked that earlier and I have written it down. So here what we will use is 162. So that's the height, the starting point of the height, 162. Then 162 plus 480, that's the last point of the height. Then the starting point of the width uh, is 55. And the ending point of the width is 55 plus 640. So that's the basic idea. Let's run that again and see if it works. And there you go. So now we have our attendance system. You can see the webcam running in real time and we have overlaid the webcam image on our graphics. So this is good. Now we can actually hide this. We don't need that. And what can we do next is basically bring in the modes. So we should have the ability to change the modes. The modes are basically active, then the information of the student, then marked, and then already marked. So these are the four uh, modes that we can use. So let's go ahead and import all these images. So we can do it one by one, or we can just give in a loop and it will store it in a list. So that's a little bit better to do. So that's why we are going to import it as a list. So for the list, we are going to simply give in the path. So you should have a path and then you should have the for loop. So we can write here folder for the mode uh, path equals, we are going to write resources slash modes. So this is our folder mode path. And then uh, the, the list that will contain all the images, we are going to call it uh, image mode list equals empty and then for the for loop we are going to write for uh, path in folder mode path um no 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 what are we doing folder mode path folder no actually oh, i forgot that we actually need another path so we need mode path equals os dot list directory and then we will get the name of all these uh, what do you call images so if you are confused like i was 30 seconds ago <laughs> then let me show you what exactly i mean so if i print this out uh, mode path list you will see that it will contain 1.png 2.png 3 and 4 so the reason we gave this is so that if you're changing in, uh, you have different folder structure, you can simply type it here instead of writing it here. It doesn't make a big difference though. So there you go. So it contains all these names, 1.png, 2.png, 3.png, 4.png. So now we can take this part and we can add it to folder mode path and it will give us the complete uh, link of the image. So that's how we can import. So that's why we need this. So we are going to remove this for path in mode path list. We are going to write image mode.list.append. We are going to add it to our list. What exactly are we going to add? We are going to add an image that we imported. So image cv2.im read, that's how we import it. And what exactly is the path? The path is this folder mode path plus this path. So we are going to write os.path.join. Uh, and we are going to write folder mode path and path. So that will add the images to our folder. And just to make sure, we are going to write print the length of uh, image mode list. So that will tell us whether we have imported all the images or not. It should be four images. There you go. It's giving us the value of four. It means we have imported all the images correctly. Let me, let me just hide it out so that if you want to test, you can test it as well. Now, it's it's good if you actually comment it out 
uh, uh, not comment it out, if you comment it. So here we are going to write uh, importing, importing the mode uh, images into a list, right? So that's what we are doing. Now what we'll do is we will add this to our, what do you call, background image. So we'll copy this part, we'll paste it, and instead of image, this time around, we will have one of these images, uh, the, the ones which are in the image mode list. So image mode list at any uh, instance. So for example, we'll put zero. So it will give us active. Then it will give us image. We can actually uh, test it out. So that's the idea. And then here we have to change the values because it's, it's not the same position. So what exactly is the position? Let me check. So we have 44, then 44 plus uh, 633. And what happened there? Oh, 633. And then we have 808, 808, 808 plus 414. So again, you can check it yourself. So here you can see now we have the active mode. And what we can do is we can check the rest. So if I put one here, it will give us the next mode, which is for the student. It will show the image um, and the data of the student. There you go. And then what we can do is we can put two and it should show us uh, marked. There you go, it's showing us marked. And then if we put three, it will show us already uh, marked. There you go. So these are the four images, the four modes that we are going to use. So now what exactly can we do? We can simply add a dynamic value here. We can add a variable and based on that variable, it will show us the stages. So that's how simple this is. So this part pretty much for graphics and for the webcam is ready. The world's first computer vision web development course is here. The power of computer vision now goes into the browser. Hey everyone, this is Murtaza from the YouTube channel Murtaza's Workshop, which has now over 300,000 subscribers. Thanks to all of you. I have been working in the computer vision field for the past nine years and have found one big problem. While it's easy to create computer vision projects, it is very difficult to bring them to the market as final products. Trust me, I have over a hundred YouTube tutorials on computer vision with Python, which are excellent to get started, but providing it as a solution to a company is extremely difficult and not effective. So now comes the solution. We have created the world's first computer vision web development course. Here you can create your own computer vision ideas and deploy it to the web as web apps. This will allow you to create solutions that can be shared with anyone with just a web URL. No installations, no running behind library versions. Whether you are creating a mass detector for a small company or a traffic analyzer for a governmental project. Using computer vision web development, you can create and deploy your computer vision algorithms at ease while maintaining and scaling them. But what exactly can you do on the web? Well, pretty much everything. With the rapid advancement in the computer vision field, now it is possible to run simple computer vision algorithms to complicated custom object detectors right in the browser. This was not possible a few years back, but now the technology is here. But it can be very difficult and frustrating to get started. Here is where we got you covered. We have carefully designed this course to take you from the very basics of web development right up to the point where you can create your own computer vision web apps at ease. This course is not a purchase, but it is an investment. We have designed it for hobbyists, freelancers and software firms that want to level up their computer vision services. Imagine providing an automated shirt size measurement to a clothing company, or customer engagement statistics to a shop owner or creating a license plate cloud-based recognition system. This course is meant to monetize the skills that you learn. So what is included in this course? We have split this course into four parts. In the first part, Computer Vision Web Basics, you will learn the basics of web development, including HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We will go through the integration of computer vision and web development, along with the OpenCV basic algorithms. We will also look into creating elegant graphical interfaces for your web apps. This part will include three projects. In the second part, Computer Vision Web Advanced, you will learn face detection, body detection, 
hand recognition, face mesh detection, body segmentation and much more to create some advanced projects. Here we will create 5 projects to solidify what we have learned. In the third part, Computer Vision Web Expert, we will learn the basics of deep learning with TensorFlow on the web. Here you will understand the fundamentals of object classification and object detection. You will use pre-trained model for testing and then learn to create your own models from your own dataset. This will allow you to create object detection for any type of custom objects. We will also create three projects in this part. This part will also contain a free Python course that will make it easier for you to create your own models. The final part, Computer Vision Web Apps is dedicated to commercially viable projects. We will create more than 20 web apps to get the maximum exposure to real-world applications. These will include automated shirt size measurements, customer engagement, car counter, face attendance, text extraction, AR glasses, face mask detection, pistol detection, and much more. This course is meant to boost your career to new heights. The computer vision industry is expected to be worth 48.6 billion by 2025, with the average salary of a web developer being 82,000 and for a computer vision engineer being 135,000 in USA. The merger of both these technologies is a deadly combination that will soon be in great demand. So it's best to get on this train in the early stages. We will also provide certificates of completion so that you can proudly add it to your resume. We will be using the world's largest computer vision library, OpenCV, along with the most popular deep learning framework, TensorFlow. So you don't have to worry about the latest tools and technology. And don't worry if you are a beginner who is unfamiliar with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or even an intermediate programmer who has these skills but needs some polishing. We have got you covered. We created crash courses that will teach you the basics to get started. And only for our Kickstarter backers, we will be providing free HTML, CSS, and JavaScript eBooks along with their video courses to get you started. There is a reason why this has not been done yet on a large scale. It is very difficult to create lots of commercial projects that are optimized to run on the web. Not only that, going through all the bugs and finding their fixes takes a lot of work. But we took the first step and started the process, and now we need your help to bring it to reality. We have written the code for almost 70% of the projects and the basics, and now we need to start production. Although this is a challenging task, we are not new to this arena. We have delivered 8 high quality and information dense courses prior to this course that have been sold in over 75 different countries. We are confident that we can deliver this course but need your help to do so. So please join our Kickstarter campaign by taking a pledge or sharing our mission with others. So these two are done. Now we are going to move on to the encoding generator. So we have to encode, we have to generate the data for all those 128 measurements and we have to store it in a file and that file we will import it in our um, face recognition and then it will display whether it has detected that face or not. So that's the main idea. So here uh, what we can do is we can create a new file and we are going to call it encode and code generator so in this encode generator we are going to generate all the code that we need uh, the encodings that we need of the faces so here we are going to import cv2 then we are going to import uh, face recognition and then we are going to import nothing else <laughs> okay so now we need to import all the images once we have the images, uh, the images I'm talking about are the faces. So we have to import these faces. Once we have these faces, we are going to encode them one by one. And once we encode them one by one, we are going to store them in a list one by one. And then we are going to dump it uh, using the pickle library. So we can import pickle. So yeah, that's the idea. So here, the first thing we will do is we are going to import all the images. And this will have pretty much the same standard as we did earlier for importing the mode images. So here, if we paste it out, so here we can write importing the uh, student images. There you go. So what exactly is the folder? Uh, folder path, let's just remove the mode. 
So it is images. So we don't have to write anything else. We'll just write images. And from the images, we are going to get the list of directory. So let me import OS as well. And then we will get the list of all the images. So, so here we are going to write image list. Here we will write image list. And here we are going to write folder paths. So if we run this now, let's see if it imports all the images. We have to change this to image list. Okay, so we are importing three. Now one more thing we have to do is to import the IDs as well. So here each image has an ID on it. So the name of the image is basically the ID. So we have to extract that. So what we are going to do, we are going to write here uh, student IDs equal empty. So here when we are importing, we are going to import the name. So here we already have this. If we print out, if we write here print mode path list. Why is it mode? We need to remove that path list. Okay, and then we write here path list. So here we will copy and paste and let's see what do we get. So here we are getting all the names. So what we need to do is, first of all, we need to get this name, right? We need this ID part. So we can get this part. It's very easy. All we have to do is we have to write, uh, what was it? Path, path. That is exactly what we will get. This dot PNG. But now we have dot PNG. So we need to remove that. So if I, if I print this, let me show you. If I print this, so it will print all of them with the path, uh, with the PNG, dot PNG. So we need to remove this dot PNG. So how can we do that? We can do that by os.path.splitText. So here we can write os.path.split split text. And here you have to give in the path that you want to split. So this is the path that we want to split. So let's print that out. There you go. So now it has split it up into two parts. One with the ID and the other one is .png. So which one do we want? We want the first one. So the first one to get it, all we have to do is we have to put here zero. So that is the first element. The zero is the first element, right? So if we run this now, now you are getting the exact value, 321654. So we have removed the dot and we have removed the dot png. The reason we are doing this and we are not just saying get the first six letters is because the numbers can change. It might have three digits, it might have 10. So this is the correct way to do it. So now that we have this, all we have to do is we have to put it in student IDs. So we are going to copy this and we are going to write here, uh, what is it, student? IDs, uh, student IDs dot append, and we are going to append all of this. So we can remove this, we can paste it here. Uh, just for your reference, I will keep it and I will comment it. If you wanted to see, you can see it as well. So again, we are going to check uh, the student IDs if they are imported correctly. Actually, we can print the whole ID thing. So we can write here student IDs, and let's see if it is imported correctly so here you can see it's extracted properly and we are getting the names uh, or the ids of our students so now to run the encodings to create the encodings we are going to create a function so we are going to send in the list in this function and this function will generate all the encodings and split out or spit out um, a, a list with all the encodings so we are going to write here find and go codings and we are going to give in the images so Im images a list let's see or did we name it yeah it's already there image list so we will just call it a little bit bigger a little bit different so images list and we are going to write here pass so what exactly are we going to do 
we are going to loop through all the images and we are going to encode every single image so we will say for image in image images list first of all uh, we we have a few steps how to encode the first step is to change the color so the color space just to make sure we are going from bgr to rgb because that is what the library uses so uh, opencv uses bgr the face recognition library uses rgb so we have to convert it so we'll write here image equals cv2 dot um, color uh, cv cvt color and we are going to write image and cv2 dot cv2 dot color underscore bgr2 to, to rgb there we go so now the first step is done we have converted it the second step is to find the encodings so we will write here encode equals face recognition dot face encodings and then we are going to give in the image and we are going to get the first element of this so this is how exactly you can find the encodings of that image now once we have that what we have to do is we have to put it in a list so we will write here encoding encode list equals empty and we are going to write encode list dot append encode so it will loop all or loop through all of these images and it is going to save it now once we have that uh, what we will do is we will return this we are going to write here return encode list and that will generate all of our encodings so here let's call this function so we are going to write encode list known so all the known faces equals find encodings for all the image list so this will generate the image list and it will save it here and then we can simply write here print encoding complete and above we can write here uh, above that sorry above here we can write encoding started dot 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 so here the encoding has started here it will generate and then encoding has completed so if there's a lot of images this will take a while so it's better to show it like this okay so that's the idea let's play it and let's see if it works encoding started encoding complete so that's very good uh, we can actually print out the encode list known just to see what exactly does it output so there you go we have some values here that we can see we have an array of all these different values so that's good so it means it's working so what's the next step now we need to save it in a file we need to save it in a pickle file so that we can import it when we are using the webcam so um but when we are saving it in a file we need to save two things one is the encodings and the other is the names or the ids so which id belongs to which encoding right so we need to tell that so we will write here encoding list known with ids equals we are going to put encode list known and then we are going to put uh, student ids so these are the two lists that we need to store it uh, in our file so we are going to generate this pickle file so how can we do that it's very simple you have to write file equals open and then you have to give in the file name so we can write anything let's write encode uh, encode file dot p and then we have to give in some permissions so we are going to write w b and then we have to send in or dump the um, lists in this file so we will write here uh, pickle dot dump and we are going to dump encode list known with ids 
and we are going to dump it in our file then we simply can close so we'll write here file dot close and we are going to write file saved file saved so that's the idea let's see if that works there you go encoding started encoding complete file saved so if we look at our directory you can see we have encode file.p so this is the basic idea behind encoding now we have extracted all the encodings and now we will go into the face recognition part so in the face recognition we are going to take these encodings and then we are going to apply it to see whether we are detecting any faces that are known or not so how can we do that it's very simple it's very easy to follow so let's go ahead to our main file and then we are going to import it here so here after importing mode images we have the while loop and before the while loop we are going to write import the encoding and coding file or let's let's not call it import let's call it load load the encoding file so uh, the loading part is pretty much similar to the uh, saving part first of all we have to open the file so we'll write file come on file so first of all we have to write file equals open which file do we want to open we have to give in the name so here we will write encode file.p and then we have to give in some permissions again so we will write rb so this is for reading and then we are going to write encode list with ids did we write the same name uh, encode list known with ids so let's just copy that encode list known with ids equals pickle dot load file so this will add all the uh, what do you call lists all the information into this encode list known with ids now we need to extract we need to extract it into two parts so the way we converted this we added these two into a single list we right now we have to separate them from the list so again we will copy this encode list known and student ids equals encode list known with ids and uh, before we do that we can simply close this so we can write here file dot close there you go so that's the basic idea behind this so let's run this and see if it prints prints student ids let's see if we have extracted the correct uh, we are running code generator uh, we need to run main again so let's run that there you go so now we have the three uh, ids of all the students so that's good and it means it's working so i will keep this here just for testing so if you wanted to you can test and we can also add something like this uh, uh, loading let's say loading encoded uh, file encode file and encode file loaded there you go so just just to make it a little bit more interactive so here it will say loading encoding file encoded encode file loaded there you go now what we have to do we have to take these encodings and we have to check in with the new faces whether any of these match or not so this is very simple it might seem a bit complicated but actually in reality it's very simple all we have to do is we have to write a few lines of code so let's go ahead and do that 
So the first thing we have to do is we have to uh, make our image a bit smaller because it takes a lot of computation power. So we will squeeze it down. We will scale it down to uh, one fourth of the size. So here we are going to write that our image small cv2 dot, uh, what was it, resize. And we are going to resize our image and we are not going to give in any actual uh, numbers. What we are going to give in are the scale values. So not the pixel values, we are going to give in the scale values. So 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. So this is the smaller image. And again, if you remember, we have to convert it into RGB from BGR. So here we can just simply copy and paste. So where was it? So CVT color, we can copy that and paste it here. And we will write image small equals this image small. So BGR to RGB. So th th this, this step is very important of conversion. Otherwise, it will not work properly. So once we have done that, now we need to feed in the value to our face recognition system. It will detect and then it will give us some output. So we need two things. The first one is the faces in the current frame. And the second one is the encodings in the current frame. So here we are going to write face current frame equals face recognition dot face locations face recognition dot why is it not showing dot face lo locations yeah there you go and we will give in our image small and then once we have the location of our images, we need to find their encodings. So we have the previous encodings of our known faces. We need to find the encodings of the new ones, and then we will compare. So this is for the new ones. So we will write here encode, uh, encode current frame equal. And we will write here face recognition dot face underscore encodings. And we will give in the image small and we will give in the face current frame. So these are the locations and these are this is the image. So go ahead and find. Because we don't want to find the encoding of the whole image. We want to find the encoding of the face. So we are giving the location of the faces and we are telling that this is the image. Extract it and find the encodings. So that's the idea. Once we have that, then we can go into the next step which is actually, uh, let's write it below this. And we are going to loop through all these encodings. And one by one, we are going to compare it with our uh, generated encodings, whether they match or not. So we are going to write for encode face, encode face, and face location, face lock, uh, in encodes current frame and faces current frame. So what exactly is happening here? Uh, we need to write here zip because we cannot um, we cannot unzip using uh, the for loop. We want to use the for loop for both of these lists at the same time. So we have to use the zip method. Otherwise, we have to um, write two different loops separately. So what we can do is we can extract the information one by one. So the extracted information of this will go in this and the extracted information of this will go in this. So that's the basic idea. Now we need to find the matches. So matches equals face recognition dot compare faces. And we need to compare it with the encode list known. We are going to compare our current face. Our current face is this one. Why is this like this? Encode. C O D E. What is wrong with my spellings today? <laughs> encode face. So we need to write that. And then again, for the distance, uh, we can find the face distance as well. Uh, the lower the distance, the, the better the match. So we will write here uh, face distance. And here we will write face distance so again 
encoding list node and encode face now this will give us a list of uh, actually let me show you so because I, if i explain it, it will be complicated let me just show you what exactly are we getting so this is matches and then we will we will print matches so let me put this as a string so you can see what is happening yeah i was using the wrong key okay this is matches and this is face distance okay so let's write here face distance so let's run that there you go so now you can see both of them have three three values because we have total of three images in the known directory because our encoding generator generated three images three encodings so it will match with all three so let me just go in the very beginning so now it will first give you true or false matches whether my face the current face from the webcam matches the first image from the images that were generated so here it actually matches my face so that's why it's saying true it did not match with emily blunt it did not match with elon musk so that's why it is giving false now how good of a match it was will be given by the face distance so the lower the face distance the better the matches so here it's 0 0.38 here it's 0 0.8 here it's 0 0.76 so it is matching with the other faces but only 0 0.8 only 0 0.7 but with my own face it matches 0 0.38 so that's why it's giving here true and uh, for the others it's giving false now if i bring in the image of let's say elon musk then it will give uh, the second one or the third one the third one it will give true because that is the face of elon musk so let me run that and let me bring in my phone and i will open an image of elon uh, let me open Elon Musk. There you go. Oh, it went back. Okay, there you go. So here, if you see Elon Musk, now at the end, it is going to say true. Let me push it here. There you go. Now it's stable. And the last one you can see, here you saw that it is showing the last one as true and the least value is 0 0.4 which is of the third one as well so this means it is a matching with elon musk so that's the main idea so uh, how can we extract this value and how can we make use of it so the first thing we will do we are going to get the index of the least value the least value so whether it is uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, which one of these is the least? We want the index, which means for this instance, we would, we would need uh, the value 2 because this is 0, this is 1, and this is 2. So how can we get that information? We will write here uh, match index equals uh, numpy dots uh, arguments a r g minimum and then we are going to give in the face distance numpy is not imported so we will write here import numpy as np there you go so now it will give us the value index value let me print that out so here we will write uh, match index and we will write here match index in my case it should give zero there you go so match index is zero because it's detecting my face and my face is the first one so it is giving the value of zero and this is the least value now once we get the zero value we are going to check it uh, in the matches list if that value is true we will say face detected the correct face is detected so that is our criteria so how can we say that we can say if matches at 
match index is true then we will print uh, face let's write known face detected there you go so let's remove these so that it's not confusing there you go so it is saying known face was detected that's the idea and to make sure that we are uh, getting the correct one what we can do is we can print out the id of this one so that um, we have the uh, correct information of which one was working so or which one was detected so here uh, what we can do is from the list what was the list name it was uh, student ids so student ids at uh, match index so we can print that there you go so three two one six five four three two one six five four is the correct id that was detected uh, let's check for elon or let's check for emily blunt uh, actually elon is already open so let's check his so there you go and let me bring down the value so we can see so here it's showing nine six three eight five two so here nine six three eight five two is elon so that is correct now this is a, a little bit weird that what we are doing so what we can do instead is we can actually show the face and show the name so that uh, it's, it looks a little bit better. So we have printed this out. Uh, we have commented, commented this out. And what we are going to do next is we are going to uh, draw the rectangle around the face. So at least we know it, it something is being detected. Now, uh, what we can do is we can use the normal rectangle uh, provided by OpenCV, or we can use CV zone. So the CV zone uh, rectangle is a little bit fancier. So we are going to use that. If you want to use OpenCV, it's fine as well. You can simply write cv2 dot rect rectangle and you can use that or you can write cv zone dot um, uh, we, did we import cv zone? No. Uh, import cv zone. Import cv zone and we are going to write cv zone dot uh, corner rectangle. So that's the idea. So uh, to fill in this we need the image. So image background and then we need the bounding box so the bounding box information is what we need the rest you can remove or you can keep uh, you don't have to give any other information but if you want to uh, we can remove the lines um, to remove the lines i believe you have to write uh, to, rt is equals to zero rt rt equals rectangle thickness RT means rectangle thickness is zero. So uh, this is the idea. So uh, to use this, we need the bounding box. So the bounding box information, what we can get is from the face location. So how can we get that? Let's write it down here. So it is very weird. It is Y1 and then X2 and then Y2 and then X1 equals face location. So that's how they mapped it. So we have to use the same uh same idea so then we are going to copy this and we will paste it twice and the reason being we have to multiply it by four because we reduce the size by four one fourth so now we have to multiply it by one uh, by four so that it is uh, matching so all of them are multiplied by four so that is well and good now we can simply put our rectangle so how can we create the bounding box information so uh, first of all to to have the bounding box information let's just write here bounding box equals to have the bounding box information we have to uh, remember that our image is not starting from zero this is zero of the image we have to um, add an x and y value which is for starting from here then our images starts so here uh, we are putting it in image background not the actual image so we have to give in that offset so what is that offset uh, in the x direction is 55 and in the y direction it's 162 
So uh, we are going to write 55 plus x1. Then we have to give 162 plus y1. Uh, then we have the x2 and y2. But we need the width and height. When we are talking about bounding box, it includes x, y, width and height, not x1, y1, x2, y2. It's not like that. So what we have to do is we have to uh, get the x2 minus x1. So x2 minus x1 and then y2 minus y1. And that should give us the bounding box. So if we run this, we should have our bounding box. Or did we? No, we have to put it back. So image background equals this. There you go. So now if we run it, it should have the rectangle around. There you go. If I move, you can see the fancy rectangle. Again, it's it's up to you. If you wanted to change it, you can uh, use the OpenCV rectangle as well. It's um, it's fine. Okay. So that's the basic idea. And so far, what we have done. Let me go back to our image. We have created the webcam. Uh, we have started the webcam. We have added the graphics. We have created the encodings. We have done the face recognition. So the next part is the interesting part where we will start the database setup. So we are going to add our database and then whatever information we are getting, we are going to upload, we are going to download, and we are going to do all of these different things. So now the database that we are going to use for this project is basically Firebase. And uh, the reason we are using this is because it's real time. It's very easy to set up and uh, you can actually use it in real projects. I have seen it uh, being used in mega projects as well. And uh, the best part is that you can scale as you go along. It's very easy to scale this uh, database. So let's go ahead and uh, set it up. So we are going to go to Firebase and then you have to login it's free to use so just go to google console uh, sorry go to the console and here you are going to create a new project so add a project here let's enter the project name uh, we will call it what should we call it face attendance uh, uh, real time there you go and we will hit continue and we will enable everything no need to be shy <laughs> and then default account for Firebase and we will create the project. So let's wait for it to finish. And uh, what we can do is, by the way, what we have to do is we have to create um, one file that will actually upload all the data to the server. And then the other file, it will actually help um, us download the code. So the other file will be basically what we are using so far it's the main file so we can download the data from here and then we can upload the information of attendance up, updated attendance from here but for the generation of code we have to add the images so these images once we store them once we have uploaded them we should be able to access them because if you look at the resources folder in the modes here, you have to show the image of the correct student that is detected. If you don't want to show the image, that's fine. You don't have to use the storage. But if you do want to show that, you have to upload the images as well. And doing it manually, again, it's not a very good thing. Then why exactly are we coding if we have to do it manually? So we will upload the images man uh, automatically, and then we will download them automatically, and it will display it based on the face detected. So that is the idea. Now it's the project is ready. We will go to the console, face real time, blah, blah, blah. And we will close this. Here we will click on build. And we are going to go to our real time database. So here you can see uh, we are going to click on create database. And uh, it's United States. That's fine. We are going not going to start in lock mode. We are going to start in test mode. We are going to enable it. And here you go. You have your first database set up. That's how easy it is. By the way, this uses a JSON format. And that is exactly what we are going to use. 
uh, for our project as well. So here we have the build and in the build, we have seen real time database. Now we need to link it. We will do that. Don't worry. Don't go ahead. Uh, then we also have storage. So if you click on storage, you are going to see uh, your storage. We are going to click on get started in production mode. No, we need it in test mode. We are going to click next. And after this location is set, you cannot change it, blah, blah, blah. We will move ahead. So it's creating our storage bucket in which we will store all these files, all the faces, all the images. Now, these images, by the way, they have a particular size. They are, uh, they are uh, 216 by 216, I believe. Yeah, 216 by 216. So all of them are the same size. So if you don't know how to do that, you can go to Canva or you can open paint and crop the image and make it smaller. So exactly 216 by 216. So all of them are same. So it will be easier for us to use. Otherwise, we have to add some code to check uh, what is the size of the image. Then we have to crop it manually, uh, not manually, but using code. And then we have to do that. So try to avoid that. Uh, what happened? It didn't create, creating default bucket. So it's creating. Uh, let's wait for it to create and then we will start uploading stuff on it. So I was facing some issues with the other database. I'm not sure why it's not able to create a new database. Uh, it's not able to create a new storage. So this is the old one. Uh, the only difference is the name, school attendance. The rest of it is pretty much the same. It's a real time database as well. Uh, there is nothing inside it. And uh, if you click on storage, you'll have this storage. Now, this is the link to the storage and this is the link to the real time database. Don't use these links. Use your own, create your own. Otherwise, it will not work properly. So once we have this, we have the storage and the real time database. What we need to do is we need to go to settings, project settings. Here we need to go to service accounts. And in the service accounts, we are going to go to Python. Python and here we will generate new private key. So we are going to create and this will create our private key. And then we have to copy this code and add it to our uh, Python code so that it runs. So this is basically they're telling you how you can use this. So let's put that to one side. Then we'll open this up. And here, what exactly are we doing? Uh, we need to add, uh, we need to set up the database. Uh, once we have that, then we need to add data to the database. Okay, that's good. So the, the images we are going to do later on. First of all, we need to learn how to add uh, data to the database. So we will click on Python file. And here we are going to write add data to database. Okay, so uh, we will copy and we will paste the code. Then we have to just drag in the secret file. So, and we can just call it this service, service account key. So this is basically the service account key. You can see it here. It contains all the confidential information. So don't share it with anyone else. And you can create your own for your own database as I've shown you. So it's going to um, use this file .json and what we have to do is we have to import these as well, the Firebase admin and uh, the Firebase admin package. So we'll go to file settings and we are going to add Firebase dash admin. So we are going to install that. We'll hit close and we'll hit OK. So now the package has been installed successfully and we can move on. So if I just run this now, uh, nothing is pretty much going to happen. Uh, actually, it gives an error <laughs> because uh, the path is wrong. So we will just remove that. So it's directly in the same folder as this file. So we do not have to write any path. So here, service account key and the add data to database is in the same folder. So we all we have to do is we have to write the file name. So that's why it did not give any errors and it just ran. So the second thing we have to do is we have to give the location of the, the database, the real-time database. So if we go to real-time database, and let's close this, here it will show this link. We have to copy. So here we can click copy reference URL. And then over here, we have to paste it. 
Again, we have to paste it as JSON uh, format. So we are going to put brackets. And within those brackets, we have to tell what value it is. The value is basically data base URL. And then we have to give in the URL of this. So that's the idea. There you go. So that is pretty much it. And then we have to create a reference. So what exactly is going to happen? This is our main directory and it has null right now inside. There's no values, there's no uh, format, there's no data. So what we will do is we will add a format, we will add a parent directory, which will be students. Inside that students directory, we will have the IDs of all the students. And inside those IDs, we will have uh, the values of all the required things. So all the required information. So first of all, we need to create the reference for this. So we will write reference equals DB. <clears throat> so we need to create the database reference. So we will write here from Firebase admin import DB. And here we will write DB dot reference and we are going to give in the path so students so this is basically the path the reference path of our database so it will create a student's uh, uh, directory over here and inside that we will have all the ids of the students now what we have to do is we have to add the data so the data we will write data equals Again, it's JSON format, then we have to give in the value. And if we want a value within a value, then we will, I will show you how it's done. So our value will be based on our uh, student. So here we have images. So this is the ID. So as I mentioned earlier, it will be based on ID. So we will write here 321654. So that's the ID number. And in this, we will have another JSON. So within this, we have another JSON, which is the value of this. And inside that, we will have all the information of the student. So for example, we will have name and the value of the name. So this is called key and this is called value. In JSON format, we have key and value. So this is the key and all of the information inside will be the value. And within that, we have another key, another value, another key, another value. So that's how it works. So my name is Murtaza Hassan. And then we have to give in a comma if we have more values. Uh, then we have major. So major, we are going to give robotics. That's what I did. And the spellings are wrong. So very good. <laughs> robotics. And then uh, we will give starting year. Starting year. And that is basically 2017 let's say that was not my starting year though i'm old now anyway so then we have total attendance total underscore attendance if i can spell it right no i cannot uh, total attendance let's say i already have let's say six attendance and then we have standing uh well i'm a good student I was a good student, Stan. The only thing I can't do is I can't spell. So, <laughs> so I'm going to put G for good. And then for ear, we have ear number four. And then we'll put comma again. I forgot it here. That's why it's giving an error. And then we will write last attendance time. So this will be the time uh, that was attended last so last time for example the student attended at the date of 24 and the next day they can only do another attendance so that's what we are going to do so here we will write last last underscore attendance uh, underscore time then we are going to give in the format so it will be the first one will be year so 2022 and then we have to give in month and then we have to give in the date so let's put 11 and then we have to give in the time so 00 let's say 54 
and let's say three four so this is the time so this is the date this is the time and based on this we will check the date and time right now and we will minus it from here and then we will see whether the time is enough to count another attendance or not so this is just a random value i've put so now this is for one student so what i want to do is i want to show you this in real time so i have put the database on one side and i've put this on one side let's just remove this and there you go so now if i run this now it should in real time update over here so let's click on add and let's wait for it and nothing happened Ooh, why did that happen so oh yeah sorry i just went too far i have to add uh, we didn't actually send the data we just wrote it and i got excited uh, what we have to do is we have to send it so we will say for key uh, key and value in our data dot items uh, basically it's a dictionary so uh, in python it's a dictionary but it's a json format so that's how you um, unzip a dictionary in python so we will write reference dot child so if you want to send the data to a specific um, directory then you have to use child and we will put it in the key and what value do we put we will write set value so it will take the key and the value so this will be the key and all of this will be the value and then this will be the key and all of this will be the value so yeah that's pretty much it now if we run it hopefully it will turn up here there you go so it created students that is the folder let's call it folder and then inside that folder we have another folder which is 312654 which is my id and if i open that up it has last attendance time which is this robotics uh, the name the starting year attendance and all that now if i change anything for example if i change my name and if i only write murtza and i run it it will only update this part oh sorry this part the name so that's how it works so that's why it's real time it's good and it's fast so if i write there hassan and i update it now it is updated with Murtaza Hassan. So again, if I have more attendance, I can add seven to it and it will automatically update the total attendance to seven. So that's how it works. So now we can just copy this part, this part, and we can paste it twice. And don't forget the comma because for every other value, we have to add a comma. So this is the next one. And then we have another one so this is the one after that so this basically normally is done through an admin panel so when the admin actually registers a student they will add it or uh, uh, initially the information in their database this is this is what we are doing using a python script so you can create a graphical interface for this to uh, for adding as well but you will need to use a pi game or tinker uh, to actually um, create that so uh, then we have uh, the other numbers. What were they? Let me check because I forgot. For Emily Blunt, we have 852741. And for Elon Musk, we have 963852. So here we are going to write the names. So Emily Blunt. And her major is, let's say, economics and she started in 2018 total attendance is let's say 12 standing is bad she didn't attend a lot but but uh, uh or let's say okay it's bad uh, i'm not going to go into too much detail so here is number two and last attendance time we're going to keep the same here we will write elon musk elon musk and his major is let's say uh physics and he started in 2014 and this is is okay that will be too much let's put 2020 and he his year is the second year as well so she started in 2018 but wrong 2021 and the year will be one my bad and uh, his standing is uh, good as well and attendance is this then it's time so now if we run this it will automatically update it 
and we will be more students added. So we have uh, the Emily Blunt and we have Elon Musk. So all the data has been added to our database. So anytime you want to update the basic parameters, the name, the major, the year or something like that, you can come back here and update it. Otherwise, uh, the attendance, total attendance number and the last attendance date time, we will update it from our main code uh, that will update uh, whenever we have detected the face. So that's the basic idea. So this is good. Now we are uh, done with our uh, step number six, add data to database. So we have done that. Now we will add images to database. Um, not the database, well, the storage. So let's go here. And as you can see, we have our uh, project overview storage. So we'll click on storage. And this is our storage. So pretty much uh, what we have done with our database, we will do with the storage and it will give us something similar. So we have to add the images and then we have to upload it, then we have to download it and all of that. So we have to create a bucket. Now the images, we should not create another file to upload the images. We should do it with the same file over here. So when we are running the encodings, we are automatically adding the images we are importing them, so why not upload it then? Well, you can do it in add to database as well, or you can do it when you are generating the encodings. So let's do it here because the code is pretty much done here. So let's just be lazy and add it here. So we are already getting all the images and we are storing it one by one. So why not one by one send it to the database as well? So here we are going to copy this Firebase admin, all that stuff. Uh, we need the credentials and we also need, we also need the storage. So we will write here, uh, import from, from Firebase admin import storage. So uh, we are not going to use credentials, I believe. We are just going to use storage. So then uh, we are going to pretty much use the same code. We are going to copy it from here. We are going to go to encode generator. We are going to paste it here. Now in the credentials, we have given the database, but now we need to give the storage. So here we will write storage, uh, what was it? Bucket, B-U-C-K-E-T. -E the link to the storage bucket is again, we will copy it from here. Uh, but this time around, we have to remove some parts. So we will remove the GS dot slash slash. So we are going to remove that. So once we have this, we are going to go into our loop, uh, the loop in which we are going through all the images. So what we can do is we can put inside this code uh, the, the name list basically, uh, or we can write it here. Where should we write for path? Uh, actually, we can write it here as well. So here we will write file name equals uh, we will write os.path.join, right? And this is folder path, and this is the path. Okay, I've removed something from here. So this will give us the file name. So once we have uh, the file name, uh, then what we can do is we can create a bucket. So bucket, B-U-C-K-E-T, equals storage, dot bucket and then we will write blob we are going to create a blob to actually send it blob is equals to bucket dot blob and here we are going to write the file name so we will write blob dot upload upload from file name and then we are going to give in the file name there you go so this is going to send the data over here. So what exactly do we need to send? So what it will do is it will create a file, uh, it will create a folder called images because that is included in the path. So it will create a folder called images and in that images folder, it will add all these images. So if we run the encode generator, did it work? 
let's refresh because this is not real time so you have to refresh and there you go so you have the folder images inside that you have this or did it do it wrong i think it did it wrong uh no let's delete all of them and we are manually going to write the we'll not use os.join so here we are going to write f uh, then this will be within our brackets then we are going to put slash oh come on we are going to put slash and then we will have our path there you go so yeah that should work now let's run it uh okay there's a space there should be no space images slash dot png does not exist why is that uh images dot png yeah it does exist what is the issue okay there is a bracket here why is there a bracket here something is wrong why is there a bracket uh, okay let's write here uh, student ID whatever we are getting here let's try this and we will write manually oh okay 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 my bad there is this my bad <laughs> okay let's run that again and there you go so no errors and refresh There you go now we have a folder images inside that folder we have all these images so these images we have uploaded and then we can download them uh, whenever we require them whenever the face is detected we can download the specific image and then we can use it in real time so how can we do that uh, let's look at the next step add images to database we have done that now we need to update the database in real time uh, whenever the attendance is increased and we need to fetch all the data from the real-time database and add it to our uh, graphics so let's go ahead and do that so here in our main file what we are going to do we are going to add the code for the database so we will go to the encode generator so we need the credentials uh, for the database and we need the credentials for the storage bucket so we will copy both of, uh, both of those actually let's just copy all of this and we'll go to main and we are going to paste it here so now we have our uh, storage uh, uh, storage and we have our uh, database url as well so now what happens is that once you detect the face once you recognize the face and we know that it has been detected correctly now we will fetch the data we will download the data from our database the real time database and then we are going to display it for a few seconds once it is done we are going to show marked for a few seconds and then we will go back to active so this is how it will work so if we open this up in explorer so the first thing will happen is it will show active right now it's active then when it is detected it will download the data it will put it on this and then display it and then once it's done uh, we will wait for a few seconds maybe one or two seconds and then after that we will show marked and then once it is marked we will go back to active and then if the student comes back again then we will say already marked you don't have to mark it again so uh, the first thing is that we have to show that it is active so to show that we will simply write image mode list we will write here mode type so here we are going to create a new variable we'll call it mode type equals zero so when it is zero it will show us active so if i run this now if i run the main it is supposed to show us uh, active there you go so it is showing us that it is active uh, once the face is detected we only need to download the information in the first frame 
we cannot keep downloading because it will be very inefficient so we have to download it only once <coughs> in the first iteration so to do that we are going to add a counter so counter equals zero so once we detect it we are going to write that if the counter i'm writing it in english if the counter equals zero if the counter is zero then make the counter equals one so if it was previously zero make it one right so that is the main idea and once it is one here we will check if counter is not equals to zero then we are going to do something then we will write counter plus equals one so it will keep counting so for the first frame for the very first frame we are going to say if counter equals one that is the first frame then what is happening then we are going to uh, download all the data we will download it and we will show it uh, at the same time so how can we download it uh, it's very simple first of all we need to find the information of the student once we get it so we are going to save it in uh, an id so here we are going to call it id equals uh, what was it id equals student ids ids at match index so uh, whatever index was matched we need the id for that so this is our id for example it will be 321654 it will be saved so if if you want to make sure that we have an id we can put zero over here and then it once it gets it it will show an id and once we have the first iteration we are going to use that id number to get actually let's write minus one because zero is also an id yeah so here we are going to write counter is one then we are going to write student info equals this is the part where we are going to download so how can we download we will create a reference we will write db dot reference and in this reference we are going to give a string we know that the first one will be students so this is our main path the main folder in that folder we need to get the information of the student and inside that we have an id so this id is the one that we got so we need that id and then once we have that we want all the information of that right so here we are going to write what's what's going on why is it like that oh there uh, there needs to be another one no students ID. why is this here sorry then uh what we need we need to get dot get that's it so we need to get all the information so here we will print it out print out the student info are we printing anything else nothing okay so only on the first frame it is going to download all the information and let's see if it downloads correctly there you go it has downloaded none excellent <laughs> so there is a mistake somewhere uh, db reference is it student or students um db do we need to give any reference other than that not really okay let me check again this part is it students or student we need to check that in the database so in the real-time database it is students 312654 maybe the id is wrong let's check the id first uh, so here once we are getting the id we are going to print it out prints id Three two one six five four. It is correct. 
the ID is correct. So once we have this ID, if counter equals zero, which it is, counter is zero, then it makes counter one. If counter is not equal zero, where is this? Yeah, it's in the right loop. If counter equals one, which it is, then student info equals db dot reference f students slash id dot get. What is the issue over here? Okay, let's just remove this. And we are going to go back and let's see if this works. Is it only for the first frame or does not recognize the data at all? None. So the student ID was what? 321654. And over here it's 312. Oh, oh, that's the, <laughs> okay, so that's the problem. The problem is my typing. So the data uh, where we added the data, I wrote this wrong. Three, two, one, six, five, four. That was the digits. So eight, five, two, seven, four, one. That is correct. Nine, six, three, eight, five, two. Okay. So this is fine now. Actually, we need to run it. Uh, we need to run this because I changed it here. So let's run that. Let's see if it updates here. There you go. It's updated. So these are now two different students. So we are going to remove this one. So there you go. We have now the correct student. And if we go to main, and I think we can put this, it should work fine. So if we run that now, uh, we should get the information of the student. So let's run main again. There you go. So last time, attendance, major, name, standing, starting year, total attendance, year number, everything, we are getting it directly. Uh, from our database so that's perfect that is exactly what we wanted and we have it uh, in the first frame only uh, and in the first frame only we are going to update but before we do that we need to change the image we need to change the mode so we will make the mode type equals one so here we are going to write uh, mode type equals one because we need to update the mode uh, which will go over here so once it is more type one uh, but will it show before or after we'll have to check uh, I'll, I'll tell you what i mean by that but let's just try it now so once we have the student info uh, all we have to do is we have to put it in the correct uh, areas so how can we do that so we can do that by writing here now this should not only be displayed when the counter is one it should be displayed at two three four five six and so on so what we will write here cv2 dot put text and we have to put it on the image background and then we have to put in the string uh, what exactly is the string the string will be student info at what information the information let's say is total attendance total because this is a dictionary you can just reference it like this total underscore attendance and that's how you can get it so total attendance is this and then you have to give in the location so location i have already checked it's 861 and 1125 for this particular uh, text then we will give in cv2 dot uh, font Hershey complex and then we will give in the size which is one uh, and then we will give in the color which is 255 uh, 255 and 255 which means white and then we will give in the uh, thickness which is one so if we run this now we should get the total attendance okay we are not getting anything um why is that so here we have changed the mode to one mode type is one so over here oh it's zero why did i put zero here it should be mode type so that's why it dynamically it should change 
So let's run that. And there you go. So this is uh, first it was active and now it is uh, the mode type is two where it shows all the details. And here you can see it shows seven. So the total attendance is seven and it has taken it from our database. Now to prove this, that it has taken from our database, we will change this total attendance. We'll click on it, we'll change it to eight. So now my attendance has changed. If I click on this now, it should give me the updated attendance number, which is eight. There you go. So now it's showing me the attendance number as eight. So this is all good. Now we have to add it to all the other, um, what do you call, values. So here uh, we have to add name. So I will copy this, paste it here. We will just change it to name. And uh, for the values, the values, it is 808 and 445. Now the name is a little bit tricky because the, the length changes a lot we have to center it and we have to center it automatically. So I will tell you how to do that. Right now we'll just add it like this. Uh, then we are going to add, uh, let's add major. So the major is 1006 and 493. Then we are going to add, uh, let's say the id so here we will write id the id is at where is it 1006 1006 and 493 okay i wrote one of them wrong major is supposed to be 1006 and 550 my bad and then we are going to write after major the standing 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 uh, standing is 910 and 625 then we have to write here here is 1025 and 625 and then we have to write uh, standing gear standing starting gear sorry <laughs> what is wrong with me today starting gear so starting gear is uh, one one two five and six two five so let's run this and see if we are getting all the positions correct except for the name i'm going to tell you how you can write the name as well uh okay the the sizes are wrong and i believe the colors are wrong as well because we can't put white here so the last three should not be white uh they should be grayish so let's put 100 100 and 100 let's copy that and we'll paste it here and paste it here for the sizing for the last three it is 0 0.6 0 0.6 0.6 and 0.6 and uh, for the ones before that is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 uh, this is for id and this is for major and the colors the colors are same i believe yeah and one more thing we have to change the name the name again will be uh will make it a little bit darker 50 50 50 so let's run that there you go so the id is correct major is correct the standing is correct number of years is correct uh, the starting year is correct and the attendance is correct now the name is wrong because it is starting at the very edge and uh, we need to center it so uh, how can we do that so let's put the name at the start or let's put it at the end so that uh, we have something separate for it so we will write it in so what exactly do we need to do we need to find the width of this text so if i'm writing murtaza hassan i need to find the width of this text 
So the width might be, let's say, 50 pixels. So I will take the total width minus 50 pixels, and then I will divide it by two and start it from there. So I will push that 50% or 50% value a little bit further, and then it will start it from there, and then it will center automatically. So I, I, I think it's pretty straightforward. So I hope I don't have to explain it further. So how can we get the size? You can get the size by cv2 dot get size get size of the text and you have to give in the text so student info at name and then you have to give in the font cv2 dot font hershey complex so this should match all of this information should match otherwise it will be wrong and then we have the scale and the thickness so this will give us the size so what it will give us it will give us the width and the height and it will also give us another thing that we do not require so we'll put so we will add this underscore because we don't need it so once we have that what we can do is we can write that our width uh, let's say uh, offset our offset equals width minus this is the total width no, this is not the total width my bad the total width it is uh, the total width is 414 how do i know this because what we are getting is the width uh, starting from this point till the end point so the width of this image is 414 so that is what we are writing so here we will write 414 minus the width which is of our text divided by 2 divided by 2 so that will give us the offset so and over here we will add it to the offset the width we will add to the offset so if we run this now it should center automatically so if we check in for emily blunt for elon musk all of them should center automatically so here we have an error put text what's wrong with put text what is wrong with put text where is it 5051 5051 here what exactly is wrong here the type is wrong okay um over here image background oh okay so we have to put double slash because it might not be an integer it might be a float so that's why it's giving an error there you go so now it's automatically centered so if i bring in let's say uh, let's bring in elon musk is it not detecting elon musk oh no uh, it will not update it a second time because right now it's only only updating for the first frame so i will bring it before it starts so that it checks for elon musk there you go so now even the elon musk is centered because um we have this code that is checking automatically uh, how to center it so all of the information is being uh, received the data is being received but not the image itself so now what we need to do is we need to get the image and we need to add it uh, to our uh, graphics as well so how can we do that it's fairly simple so uh, where are we getting the data here we are getting the data over here so we will write here get the data so here we will write get the image from the storage okay so how can we do that uh, we are basically reversing the method we are writing here blob equals bucket bucket dot get underscore blob 
the bucket is not defined because uh, we didn't create a, any bucket so here we will write uh, buckets equals storage dot bucket and then here we will write get blob and we are going to give in the reference so it will be f and then we have the images folder if you remember in our storage so if we go to storage uh, we have the images folder first and inside that images folder we have our uh, images by their IDs so again we have to do the same thing we will write slash we'll put ID and that is pretty much it and then uh, we don't have to write PNG do we no we do have to write PNG dot PNG because that is the complete name it is stored with the PNG name so we have to write that as well otherwise it will not work proper so then we have to create an array from this array equals numpy dot from buffer so just think of this as a standard method of converting don't have to go into too much detail import numpy as np and um, from from buffer 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 and uh, we will write blob dot download as string and then we have to give in uh, the numpy dot unsigned integers of eight bits so that's the idea and once we have that array now we need to convert it so that we can use it with OpenCV so we will write here image student equals uh, cv2 cv2 dot uh, image decode and we will give in the array and we will give in the conversion cv2 dot color uh, underscore bg R, uh, BGR A to BGR. So this will give us the image. And now what we can do is we can use this image outside here to display. So let, let just to make sure that it works, we can put here image student equals empty. And later on, we will keep adding it. So here, um, after all of the text is done, we are going to put in the image. And to put in the image, we'll write image background at what values equals image student. So what are these values? Again, I have done the math already. And it is 175 and 175 plus 216 because 216 is the size of the image. And these, this is the offset. So the offset in the width is 909. And then we have 909 plus 216. So if we run this now, Again, it will download it once, but it will display it again and again. So let's find out. And there you go. So now you can see my image is downloaded, number of attendance, ID number, major, good standing, year number, total number of years in the university. So that is the main idea. So it is working very well right now. So uh, the next step is to update the attendance so every time it is uh, uh we detect it it should update the attendance so we have to send the data and this we will only do once because uh we don't need to keep doing that every iteration so how can we send it it's very simple so here after getting the data and getting the image we are going to update the data so here we will write update data of attendance so here we are going to create a reference reference equals db db dot reference and we'll give in the path so it will be of the student and id over here like this and now using this reference we are going to send in the data so here we will write that first of all we need to update so student info at uh, total underscore at attendance equals we are going to update so we'll write plus equals one and now we are going to update this value 
in our server in the database so here we are going to write ref dot child if you remember uh, when we were sending the data we wrote ref dot child dot set so we are going to do the same thing ref dot child dot set and child what value we we need to update total attendance and we need to update it with this value so whatever the updated value is we need to update it with that so let's run that and see if it works so i'm going to put this on one side and this will be on the other side so let's go to the real time database and i will open up uh, my own there you go and here the total attendance is eight so if i run this now it should update to nine as soon as it is detected There you go. So it is updated to nine and it is also showing nine over here. So it means it is correctly adding the values to the database. And if I run it again, uh, it should update it to 10. There you go. So now the total attendance is 10. It has been updated. So this is the basic idea of this attendance. And then what else do we have to do? Now, uh, what we need to do is we need to create uh, this timer thing so that uh, once it is detected, it will detect, okay, we need have updated, we have marked, and then it will go back to active to detect for a new student. So how can we do that? So the counter is already running. So we will show all of this only when the more type is two. So what we will do is we will say that we will give it some certain values so over here uh, i believe it is from 0 to 10 then 10 to 20 and then 20 to 30 yeah so greater than 20. so here it's a little bit tricky because we have to add it uh, based on certain formatting if we add uh, the if statement above another if statement or below the other if statement it will change the effect so we have to make sure it is in the correct format so the first thing we have to do is if uh, our counter is less than 10, uh, less than or equal to 10, then we are going to display all of this. The more type will be one and we will display all of this. So we are going to do all of this. There you go. But if that is not the case, if the counter is between 10 and 20, then we are going to display marked value but that is supposed to be done before this otherwise because the the only time it's updating the image is here so it will be too late for us to update so we have to update it again so here we'll first check do we need to update we need to update it when if counter is in between uh, 20 or let's remove that 10 and 20 so if it's between that then we have to make mode type equals 2 and if we make uh, change the mode type we need to update the image before putting everything on it so here we will write image background here will be mode type so let's run that and see if it works so the first 10 frames it is supposed to show the image and all the data and then it will say marked there you go it's showing and then it says marked now once that is done we did not say what to do next the next part is when the counter is completely done when it is above if the counter and this has to be below the counter plus one if it's above the counter plus one there will be one wrong frame so add it below the counter you can try it out to see what happens but i have checked it and that's why i'm telling you if counter is uh, greater than or equal to 20 then we are going to write counter counter equals zero then mode type equals zero basically we are resetting everything then the student info equals empty and the image student equals empty and we are going to update uh the mode type again 
because we updated the mode type we need to reset it quickly at the same spot so let's run that and see what happens so it should reset all of that there you go marked active then it will start again marked active then it will download it will show you can see the attendance is updated last time it was 14 now it will be 15 and then it will go to 16. so again that's not the right way uh, you should not keep adding the attendance values so what we need to do is now we need to uh, pause and we need to check whether you are uh, whether the attendance was done an x amount of time after the previous attendance so to do that what we will do is it's very simple uh, where did we update the attendance where are we updating the attendance okay so here we are updating the attendance so here we are going to say if the student time was more than 30 seconds from the previous attendance then we are going to mark attendance because we are testing otherwise you will put uh, the total amount of seconds as the actual hours um, for example you want it after 12 hours or the next day so you want it after 24 hours so you will add it in seconds instead of hours so here we are going to write that our date underscore uh, date time object equals date time dot string to time now why are we doing this because the time over here is basically string whatever we are getting from the database is string we need to convert it into an object that the date time understands so we will tell the date time what is the time right now and minus it from this time so when you minus it it is not string minus string it is object minus object so that's why we have to convert it so string time uh, we have to give in the student info of the last underscore attendance underscore time so the last uh, attendance time and then we have to give in the format where did it go then we have to give in the format uh, the format we are using is basically i will write it down here uh, it is percentage first of all we have the year then we have percentage month then we have the percentage day then we have a space then we have hours then we have colon then we have minutes and then we have colon and then we have seconds so this is the format basically you can see it here this is what we are writing it that uh, when you are creating the object create it in this format from the string date time is not added because we did not import it from from date time imports date time okay so now it will have that uh, now it is converted and now we need to find the date time right now so we can write that date time dot now it will give us that time minus date time object this will be the seconds uh, elapsed equals this but this will not be in seconds it will be still in this format so we need to convert it into seconds so we will write dot the method we will call it dot total seconds so it will give us the seconds elapsed so if we print it out we can print out the seconds elapsed so if we run this now uh, before updating it will give us the time the seconds that were from the previous one so here we are getting a warning the string time is not there so it's strp my bad so it's string p so 
let's run that. There you go. So six, 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 uh, sorry, 6,602, then 6,608. Uh, but now it's not updating the, the last attendance time. So we need to update it right away so that next time it should not be 6,000 seconds. Next time it should be five seconds or six seconds, whatever time it's taking. So we will put it here, reference child, uh, total attendance time. And here the, the time will be the date time right now. The date time right now. There you go. So let's run that. So now it will update the last attendance time as well. So that will give us the correct. Okay, there is a problem. Date time dot now. Uh, we need to convert it. Okay, 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 okay. So we need to convert it dot string strf time. And we need to give in the format. This is the format that we need to convert it into. And then we can run it. Let's run that. So here it should update. There you go. You can see it updated. So now the time elapsed was six seconds rather than 6,000. So next time it will be again 5.7. So now we can check how much time has elapsed so that uh, whether we should update the person or not. So here we can simply write after seconds elapsed, we can write if seconds elapsed is greater than 30. So this will be 30 seconds. But if you want to do it in real time, you should do it for how many uh, hours or seconds uh, you have to convert it into seconds, as I mentioned earlier. So if that is the case, then we are going to update and add. Otherwise, we are going to uh, give in the mode number three. So else else mode type equals three counter equals zero and uh, we will still um, update our image so whenever we change the mode type we need to add the image background uh, this code so that it updates uh, in real time so that is the case and then if we run it let's see what happens So there you go. So it is marked. Now it's showing active, but now it's showing the image and all of that. It's showing already marked, but now it's showing the image, the text and all that. We need to stop that. So here, this is the part where it's showing all of this. So all we have to do is uh, we have to write here that if the mode type is not equals three, then you can do all of this otherwise don't do it all of this there you go now it says already marked and then you have to push this in, counter plus one, it checks it here, yeah. So when the counter is above 20, it will go back to active. So you just had to push it in, it was in the wrong loop. So let's run that. And as you can see, the time and the uh, uh, attendance is automatically updated. So it says already marked. But uh, uh, before it says already marked, it shows active. And then after already marked, uh, if I remove my face, it should say active again, but it's not doing that. So we need to fix that. So if mode type is three, so in this case, if nothing is detected, uh, no, not in that case, if counter is not equal zero, if that is the case, let me just recheck it again. Ah, 
okay yeah so we need to add another if condition that if the face is detected so here we will write if there is anything in the face current frame then do all of this all of this else mode type uh, equals zero and then counter equals zero so if we play that again then we should uh, when i put my face in it should remove the already detected or already marked so if i put my hand in uh, it shows active then already marked and if i put my face here it shows active if i remove uh, it says already marked so i need to wait 30 seconds so i'm going to uh, block my face uh, and hope for 30 seconds then once the 30 seconds are up uh, it should say uh, marked so let's wait 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 and let's try it there you go now it marked again and now it's marked active and now it will say already marked so after 30 seconds we were able to mark it again now one more thing we can add which is a little bit um, for for the aesthetics of it once the object is detected once the face is detected you will see here it delays it lags so this is because it is downloading the data from the database if you want to remove this lag you have to use asynchronous functions so we are not going to go into that much detail uh, we have covered this in our web development course in which we will create all of this in uh, our website and once we have done that we are using asynchronous functions so it will show the video in real time and it will update and download the code uh, download the database uh, at the back end so it will not delay as much it will not get stuck so in order to um, avoid this as a problem in order to make it better what we can do is we can just write loading once it is detected so th that way it will not look that bad it will not look like it's stuck it will just think that it's encoded uh, it's loading so in order to do that let me check where do we add that um, yeah if the known face is detected if the known face is detected which is over here uh, we have our mode type and counter as one and in this when the counter is zero what we will do is we will write here cv zone cv zone dot put text rect and then we will put it on the image background and we will put loading l o a d i n g and we will put it at the position 275 and 400 and then we will update the image because it will not show it as it is so we will write cv2 dot i am show you have to write the exact name so we used face attendance so we just we can just copy this and we can paste it here copy this part and paste it there you go so now once it detects it will say loading so I will cover my face. Uh, now it's running. If I remove, no, it's not saying loading. <laughs> That's not good. Why is it not saying loading? Uh, if counter is zero. Oh yeah, we need to add the wait key. CB2 dot wait key. We need to add a delay of one millisecond and then it will update. So let's hide my face again okay if i put that it says loading and then already marked because i just did it that's why uh, there you go so now 30 seconds were up so now i can mark again now it says loading and already marked so if i hide it the loading is gone and now it's active and then we can mark others as well so if i wanted to mark i can mark for example let's say i want to mark elon musk and i will go here and there you go loading and it shows elon musk so that's the idea it's marked and now i will uh, do for emily blunt uh, emily blunt there you go emily blunt detected 
major economics, total attendance, whatever the attendance number was. So that's the main idea. So this was our complete project. Everything is updating. Everything is running fine. So if you want to learn more about this, if you want to learn how to actually implement this on a website and how to actually use it in real time, uh, you can check out our web development course, which is computer vision web development course, which is the world's first. And it will teach you all the basics of web development as well as computer vision, along with creating more than 30 web apps that will give you a lot of in-depth knowledge of how to create real world applications and solve real world problems so if you want to check it out our kickstarter campaign is live right now go ahead and check it out do back it if you cannot just share it with your friends so that we can bring it to reality so this is it for today's video i hope you have learned something new if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you loved it share it with your friends and i will see you in the next one